The question in my mind is, how do you create or relaunch a highly profitable and successful six to seven figure business? With so much conflicting advice about the best ways to start and grow your business, how do you get it right the first time? I want to help entrepreneurs make a real difference and navigate the messy world of startup or relaunch. My name is John North, and this is the Startup Secrets for Entrepreneur Show. Join me today when we dig deep with our guests and get you the best blueprint so you can fast track your own business. This episode is sponsored by Volpreneur.app, your all-in-one online business system. Make sure you subscribe for future episodes at StartupSecrets.show right now. So let's get into the day's episode. Hey, this is Jay Vicks with JVI Mobile Marketing. Had a great time on John's Startup Secrets show tonight. And you really should check this episode out because what we talked about was how I kind of didn't set out to have a marketing agency and sort of by accident, I ended up with a marketing agency and, it, and we've really talked about the journey from, from nine years ago to today. And I think you won't be disappointed. So check it out. That's great. You're listening to the Startup Secrets Show for Entrepreneurs and I'm your host, John North. My mission is to help entrepreneurs make a difference and navigate the messy world of startup or relaunch, or commonly called a pivot. So to join me today, and we dig deep with guests and get the best concepts and strategies to get your fast track your business. So my very special guest today is Jay Vix from JVI Marketing, and uh, welcome to the show, Jay. Hey, thanks for having me, John. I'm I'm excited to be here. Thanks so much. Cool. So um, we had a bit of chat before, and we're going to talk about it today is about the accidental marketer, which I think. Um, in some respects, most um, entrepreneurs end up being accidental. <laughs> I think it's um, you know I think you, you get your brain into one thing and then realise it didn't work or whatever. You pivot to something else and you end up being in a place you would never think of being. I don't think I'd ever would believe that I was going to you know 20 years ago I'd be living in Sydney. <laughs> so it was like completely different. So how did you get to a point where you like, what's your background now in terms of where you got to here? Yeah, uh, it, it, good good question. I was just thinking as you were saying that, gosh, 20 years from now, if I could be living in Sydney, I probably would be pretty good too. Um, but uh, but <laughs> so to, I, I have a background in sales, marketing, web design, um, entirely self-taught, everything I did. I didn't go to college. I, I took some college courses, but wasn't wasn't ready after high school and just never never really took hold. So I knew I had to that was my first pivot was I had to learn how to hustle from a very early age and figure out how to navigate life without the, the piece of paper that says I could go get a job anywhere I wanted. Um, and, uh, and at the, uh, ripe old age of about 35 as I'm married and I'm just working kind of dead end sales job after dead end sales job, I, I decided to leverage my marketing and my web development, like my interest in technology, and I started teaching people. I was working for a sales job for a Verizon retailer, so I was selling cell phones. And um, what I was learning, in, and this is 2010, 11, 12, what I was learning was that a lot of seniors, like over 55 community, were buying smartphones because their kids and grandkids had them and they wanted to keep up, but they didn't know how to use them. So I started doing these classes. I was teaching people how, I, I called it, how to use your stupid smartphone. Cause everybody was says, I can't figure out how to use the stupid smartphone, right? <laughs> and um, so uh, what I was, what, what got me into where I, where I ultimately am today is that a lot of these same people that were coming to my courses owned small businesses and had no idea how to market their business in this new digital age, right? So um, I joined, I linked up with a, a company that was a white label reseller for uh, developing mobile apps. Mm -hmm. And I went to a couple of local business owners that I knew and I said, hey, let's build an app for your business. And sure enough, I had a couple of quick wins and a side hustle was born. And then what it turned into, I was like, all right, what else can I offer? And it was text message marketing. So got into text message marketing. And then I, I started having people start to ask me, what else can you do for me, right? Can you do my website? Can you help me with Facebook? Can you do this? Can you do that? And, and sure enough, over time, I had built this, this 
what started out to be a mobile marketing company has turned into more of a digital agency. Mm. And uh, I, I kept the mobile apps until about three years ago. I finally uh, dumped it and stopped doing it because the, the we, we kind of alluded earlier that the volume just wasn't there. But mm. uh, but yeah, so, so now today I'm, I'm here, I'm in the Greensboro, North Carolina area, and I kind of run the gamut of coaching people with, with their digital marketing issues, training, doing a lot of podcasts and talking and, and, and uh, speaking and workshops and this and that. But then on the back end, I have a, a very small team of a few contractors and we actually implement what we teach, which is uh, the, the digital marketer frameworks and tools. So That's quite, quite interesting because it's quite a similar journey I did. I think you, you, because you're good at computers, I think you're good at marketing, right? And then you have to actually get good at marketing because it's like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and so I kind of went through a similar scenario. I think and we discussed we actually use the same white label platform. And I think part of the problem with that was there was no integration to anything else. So it's almost like the, the conversation would stop once I downloaded the app. And if you didn't use the app features then you ended up in a situation where how do you translate this person to a customer from there and how do you manage that? And one guy said to me, and I think he's quite smart, he said to me that if it's not a transactional app where they have to come on and do things constantly, it will never work. Yeah. And he was dead right because when you look at an app that's for a, say, a hairdresser and they're not using it to book appointments and, and give them the information, it's just a marketing app, it would never work because the, no one ever paid any attention to it. That's right. And, you know, one, one of the other things that um, towards the end of, of me being a, a reseller with them that, that I learned was, you know, uh, people don't want to keep apps on their phones, like you were saying, if they're not using them. And, and then the space on the phones bec was becoming limited. So people were like, well, I'm running out of space, so I got to keep Facebook. I got to keep Instagram. I got to keep Uber. And, you know, it's like they're, they had these, you know, these few apps that they wanted. Mm. They didn't want the local pizza shop or the local salons you know, things taking up uh, space on the phone. So then they tried to pivot me towards doing these progressive web apps. Mm. And I, I still think there's a, there's a time and a place for those, but it's, it wasn't anything that I really wanted to go out and kind of push in the marketplace. Yeah. And I think that's the problem. Like I think a lot of the, the apps that you use now, like LinkedIn is essentially a progressive app, but, but they've got a framework around it. Whereas progressive app for people that understand is basically a mobile website essentially that sits on your phone that kind of pretends to be an app <laughs> but that's right has, it only has about half the features of an app um, <laughs> yeah, it's like kind of a bizarre thing i think it's almost like a trade-off between well if app store won't improve me then i'm going to do this instead um and totally yeah so it's an interesting kind of i think mobile um it's one of the fastest transitional things that went like you couldn't it's not like it's sat around for for 10 years and it morphed into something else it moved quick like it went yes. from one thing to another um totally now you see everybody's on their phone when you know in 10 years ago like i i, I play squash a lot and although with this current lockdown in sydney i'm not going anywhere but basically <laughs> it's like You'd go to squash and there'd be no one with a phone, like maybe f six, ten years ago or less, no one with a phone or hardly anybody. Now when you go there, everybody's on the phone. And right. so that, that moves so fast. And, and I remember the original owner of the squash club said, uh, this is not an internet cafe. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like, and he, started, <laughs> he tried to stop people from using their phones while they were at squash. And I thought, you're just trying to hold back the tide here, dude. And now yeah. he's on the phone sometimes. That's like, yeah, you got caught up with this whole thing of being addicted to the phone, essentially. And, you know, it's, it's a kind of a funny situation where you've got that eyeball, um, but it's not necessarily directed at anything, you know, like it's very distractional, like they, keep, they go straight away into something else, you know. Completely. So one of the, um, one of the things that got me thinking is too, is that I noticed that there are people these days um, it's almost like people have forgotten how to verbally communicate, right? Like they, they're, they're really good at texting. And, and now there's almost like this, this demand on how fast you can reply to a text. And if you don't reply within like a couple of minutes, people are like, is everything okay? You know, but like, <laughs> Do you call the to, police? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It used to be just like, leave a voicemail. Yeah. Um, you know, but now it's like now with texting, people just think that people think that once they send a message, you're going to see it. And, and most people do. 
mm. uh, pretty quickly. But but a lot of a lot of people and and what's worse is sometimes you know if you have a if you have a client or a customer, I've seen it where, where they expect you know that can be customer service, right? Yeah. And um, and and then that can happen at nine thirty at night, and then you know you run you run into these issues. But everybody's on their phone all the time, and and I'm guilty of it too. I mean, if mm. I want to get something done, the first thing I do is I pull out my phone, or if I want to find something out, the first thing I do is pull out my phone. So yeah. I, I feel like it's it really did move fast. I mean, to think that just 10 years ago, you know, only like 30 or 40% of the, the people had a smartphone and most people were still so resistant. And in 10 years, it's like, who doesn't have a smartphone? Yeah. I mean, the holdouts well, are now getting those razor flip smartphones that are yeah, I was actually out. I had a Dell them. guy come and fix my laptop the other day and he pulls this flip phone thing out and it's like quite interesting. <laughs> As actually, I was listening to a fun fact here in because Australia just won or, or Queensland run the Olympics for 2032 just recently. Third time, oh, third yeah. country, um, city that's going to have the Olympics. But the first Olympics in Melbourne was 1956. And in, in 1956 was the first Olympics that was televised. And essentially, there was only 100,000 TVs in Australia at the time. Um, that's so amazing. Imagine that that would probably a suburb now. My suburb's probably got that many TVs, right, or screens. Sure. But at the time, you know, the only rich people had TVs, right? It was all black and white. But it was quite amazing that really that it's only been 50, 60 years. And when you look at that transition from virtually nothing to, to the way we live now, which is such a connected world, but but we're also more disconnected than ever. Um, yeah. It's scary. Yeah, totally disconnected. I, I, it's, it's, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, we have the technologies there, but yet I feel like, you know, the, the art of, of human conversation or communication is dying or it's maybe not dying. It's just morphed. It's something totally new now. That's, that's very foreign to, to guys like you and me that are, you know, beyond 40 years old, you know, and it, it, it is kind of like now I'm, I'm looking at, I've got a couple of contractors on my team who are younger and, mm. and they're great. They, they, they talk, but I, I've often been come into the, the online meeting room and there's like two or three of them and they're not even talking to one another, mm. like while they're waiting on me or something. And I'm like, that's weird. Like guys aren't even like saying, Hey, what's going on? So anyway, um, yeah, no, but you, it's, and you, you look down and, and essentially they're on their phone. So wherever you go, like everybody's sort of like, they reckon that the, the zombie apocalypse has already happened because everybody's <laughs> staring at their phone, right? It's <laughs> a bit of like, in the form. Yeah. It's a bit of a funny um, world. So uh, actually it was interesting. I'm, I'm working with someone at the moment who's going to be a future guest on, the sh- on one of the shows. And one of the things he works on is this, uh, and we were just working on an interesting thing about, I've got a client where it's medical, he's, we sell a, a, a membership and people come and ask all these questions. Like, you know, they might send you a big, big, long email about your questions about their health issues or whatever. And we kind of, it's bizarrely, and it's, I look back and think it's a mistake, and I think people do this, it's quite interesting. They'll, those emails are considered admin or, you know, support-ish emails, so they're not asked for help. And so what happens is you kind of just deal with them and close them down. But the way they're working at the moment is this conversational started. Like that someone sent you an email, asked you a question, and now you're just shutting them down because you're trying to solve their problem when actually it's a, it's a chance to make a sale and have a conversation. But you're shutting this conversation down before it even starts. Yeah. And it's such a yeah. nice opportunity when you think about it. There, there, there's so many. There's so many. I think, I think again, it, it, in, that, in that regard, it's, it's kind of an, an art form. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, you know, you got to be a good at the written word. I've always been lucky that I've had I've, I've been able to um, communicate via writing really well. Actually, my, my wife uh, will, will be the first person to tell a story that that uh, we, we met online, actually. And if and and one of the things that she said, like she she wasn't really interested at, at first with even dating anybody online. And um, but I had written her a couple of times and she said that my writing was like made her very interested in me and I was like so maybe I'm a natural born copywriter but it worked you know we're still yeah. married to this day so it's awesome. kind of fun <laughs> absolutely <laughs> I did I did I wrote correct. something right <laughs> <laughs> and that was way back in 2005 so yeah, yeah. I talk about I guess I'm, I guess I have some experience now in writing for the in the for for the you know, written written word through electronic communication so and so that's an interesting thing like I find that um entrepreneurs struggle with is then they they are their best copywriter. I mean, I, I did an interview with Jimmy Edwards um, a few years ago, and one of the things was that you shouldn't be outsourcing your copywriting. You should be you should be getting better at it because at the end of the day, you're the best person to write what you're about. 
And secondly, if you do get a copywriter to write something, it's probably the first draft you're going to change anyway. So at the end of the day, it's almost like they're never going to come back with this perfect result that you think is right. So you, you would have been better off writing at least as best you can and then get someone to help you improve it if you have to. But I think there's an avoidance to think, well, you know, words don't matter, but they do. That's probably the biggest thing um, in any sort of marketing exercise is you can have the most beautiful website in the world, but if the words are a substandard or the, what your messaging is right, and is, you're not going to sell a thing. <laughs> Do you want simple and effective ways to get started that don't cost a fortune in time and money? Discover the best steps for each strategy we teach and the most important areas to focus on, and even to connect with your best customers and grow an online community. Grab your free copy of Startup Secrets for Entrepreneurs at startupsecrets.show. I've often, I've often said, I couldn't agree with you more, I, I've often said that, you know, nobody's going to sell my company or my services better than me. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it kind of goes along with that is, you, you know, we're, we're always going to be the biggest chief salesperson Now we might be able to find good salespeople that can sell our products and services. But at the end of the day, nobody's going to be able to do it quite like we can because it's ours. Right. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I find is really cool though, that's, that's kind of really booming right now is, is the artificially intelligent copywriting tools that are out there. And yeah. I love those because I want to keep the writing in house and I want to do it, but the, some of these tools are so super smart that I can come up with a, a, a draft of a blog post in like an hour. And then I just got to look at it and edit it. And I'm like, man, I wish I could have thought of that or that line. And it's like so good. So yeah. I'm, I'm really impressed with how far, um, the, that whole, I guess it's open AI or GPT three. I'm, I'm not, I'm not totally up on the technology, but I do use a couple of, couple of tools to help me right now. And, um, I'm fascinated. Like AI writer just recently, someone referred it to me. It's quite nice. It's it's designed to write long blogs and stuff like that. So there's a, a plethora of them now. The looks of it. Yeah, there's one conversion.ai that I've been using um, out of. I guess he's out of Austin, Texas. Mm. Um, but uh, really, really cool. Uh, really cool technology. Definitely a great way to fast track it, right? Like at least you get your ideas down in some sort of semblance of order, and then you can you can tune it. But I don't think you ever crack it the first time anyway. Like. No, no. I, and I wouldn't, if I sat down and wrote it, I'd be, you know, if I came back to it 24 hours later, I'd be like, this is garbage, you know, and I'd want to fix it myself. So, so when I have that spitting it out, it just cuts down that, that process time. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of, of trying to figure out how can we automate and do a better job in less time, right? Always, how can we improve in, in, in less time? Cause typically when you think of improving, you think you have to do more, Mm. right you're gonna have to do more to do a better job and now it's like well how can we do more with less time because time is so scarce and, mm. and we can't get it back when it's gone so uh so i'm fascinated by any of these automated tools or or technologies that can help us you know um just just document the process take people through a process automate the process i, I think it i think it's extremely helpful and and yet i think a lot of people are still intimidated by it yeah, and as I said, we're probably kindred souls here because that's basically the way I think. Like, I look at it and think, can I automate this? Can I speed it up? Like, do it manually first, figure out a way to kind of speed it up. And, and I think the I saw a wise guy, uh, like a futurist or whatever, say something interesting a few years ago. And he said, if you're a high touch business, if you if you're really personal, and it's probably you know in the pandemic everything it's probably changed dramatically. But if you're high touch, you should go high tech. If you're high tech, you should go high touch. Because That's what's interesting. happening is you're missing out that piece. Like you need both. You need that high tech. You need that high touch points. And I think that's what people forget is that, yes, automation is great and it's a good idea, but be careful you don't use it for the wrong reasons. And, yes. And, and, but if you're really high tech or high touch right now, there's so many ways you can automate things that people don't mind. Like, you know, some people don't want like the phone. Like people don't want to ring up. They want to just do, do it online. If they can just do it online simply, they'll do it. But people don't give them that opportunity to do it because they want to talk to them on the phone because it's the only way to deal with them. But you can you can automate most of those conversations or those processes, at least 60, 70% of it. And, and I imagine you're right. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 wild. It it blows my mind. And I, I swear that that's what that's what keeps me working, right? I mean, that's what keeps clients coming to me is like they're like, hey, can you know, can you help us with this? Can you help us with that? that nothing's changed. But yet everything's changed in the last, <laughs> right. you know, eight, eight nine years. Uh, it's I think wild. The principle, I think the principle of selling and the principle of business hasn't changed in centuries. 
Yeah. I think that's what people, they kind of forget it. I think sometimes they think that, uh, and I think the age of this kind of, the Uber age where, you know, you're given jobs and it's a transactional thing. So a lot of people have transactional jobs where they might go and deliver food or they might be, you know, doing mm-hmm. Ubering and stuff like that. And that sales process is taken away from them so they don't need to learn how to sell or how, how to actually be, um, you know, involved in that process. So it's almost like it's, it's made them lazy and they don't think about how to sell. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a much deeper way of thinking of it that I don't even think I've gone down that road, but you, you, you're perfect, you're dead on with that, I, I, with that assessment, I agree. People, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's so different. But, but again, at its core, you're right, there's, it's still the same thing, you still have to be able to do it, right? Yeah, and know what you're doing, like subconsciously, like, you know, like I was working with Ross today, was like, yeah, well, I do that, I've done that for 30 years, but I didn't think about that for this client. Right, it's almost like you forget your own stuff, right? And in the end, you think, "Wait a minute, I could have, I could have done this. Is a this would have worked?" But you actually forget. So I think sometimes it's like you got to remember the basics. I think that's that's the, the secret of this thing is go back to the basics every so often. Am I doing the basics here? Every once in a while, and it's funny, you know, there, there's so many of those old expressions like the cobbler's kid has no shoes or, you know, the, the mechanic's car is the one that needs brakes because they spend all day working on everybody else's car. And I often think like you know, figuring out what to do to grow my business sometimes seems like the most daunting task in the world. But a client <laughs> comes to me and says, Hey, can you market my business? And I'm like, I've got a, I've got a full strategy laid out for them in four hours, you know? And it's like, well, I can't think of it for myself, but, but again, I spend all day and, and the only thing that keeps me grounded and keeps me coming back is when I get back to the basics. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably forgetting a lot of really good lessons that I've been taught and I have mm-hmm. to go back and kind of relearn or, 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 you know, we we're big at our, uh, at our agency, one of our, uh, kind of our core core values is to always be learning, right? Mm-hmm. Like continuous education, go back and take another course, go back and, you know, take, go, go watch a workshop, go attend a, you know, a conference, do something, um, always be learning something. And, um, and you, you kind of have to now, especially in, in the uh, agency world, because it changes so fast yeah. um so that the technologies and the and the tools uh are so so rapid um but again you can get back to its basics like what is the end goal like that's why i think the system that we use through the digital marketer certified partner using the customer value journey and kind of the one page marketing plan where we map out stranger to raving fan that's why i think it's so brilliant mm-hmm. because at the end of the day it's like this is the basics now we might use 15 pieces of software and tools to, to put this all together. But at the end of the day, we're trying to move this stranger and get them engaged with you and get them to opt into something, get, give them some value, get them excited, turn them into a customer, then get a review and then get them to go tell other people. It's like, it, you know, ha, you know, it's, it, it's just that simple, but then you have to kind of constantly be learning as to what's the best way today where we can get most of that done in as little time. And I, you know, I think the real big problem is, in some respects, is that you forget that the person at the other end of that email, the website's actually a human being. A human, yeah. And and I think you think, oh, I'm just going to respond like a robot, and a robot response is going to come back, but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so you end up forgetting that there's a human being at the other end of that thing. Um, yeah. And it's really funny with the cloud, like people say, I'll put it in the cloud. Well, the cloud's just someone else's computer. Right. right. Yeah. It's, it's like this imaginary thing that sits in the air. It's not. It's someone else's computer. <laughs> it's, it's not yours. <laughs> I hear that all the time. Yeah. Uh, if I had a if I had a nickel for every time people are like uh, like they log into Facebook and they're like, well, if I log out, is all my stuff gone? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not on your computer. It's not on your computer, but it's not in the cloud. It's on someone else's computer. It's on somebody else's computer. You want to hope yeah. that they're looking after it for you. So where That's do you right. see? Where do you see you um, you going in the next, say, five years-ish in terms of, of marketing? Is it something that you see there's a big pivot in terms of what's going on now? I think it happened for me. I think the pivot happened for me last year. Uh, tw- at the end of 2019, I had the most grandiose plans and ideas. A lot of people were telling me that I needed to go do more workshops and speak in front of groups because people were like, Jay, when you, when you do these workshops, he's, they're like, I see it. People are taking notes and they're hanging on your every word. And you really just have this knack for, for storytelling and, and doing these things. And I'm like, 
people have told me that my whole life and I always dismissed it. I was like, yeah, but I just like typing things into a computer. And it finally clicked in, at the end of 2019. They're like, no, I, I kind of, I, I kind of feel like I have, I was given a gift of like getting out and talking to people and helping people and mm-hmm. teaching and coaching. And, uh, even, even going back 20 years ago, I played in a band and I should have, I should have just drawn on that experience. Cause when I was on stage, I was like, I mean, I, I wanted, I just hammed it up. Right? I'm jumping all over the stage and I'm like, well, you know, who look at me, you know? And, um, but I, I forget these things. And, and in the end of 2019, I decided that 2020 was going to be the year that I'm busting out and I'm going to go find speaking commitments. I'm going to go do workshops and boot camps, and I'm going to teach here and I'm going to get in front of these people and these people. And then March happened. And then, well, you had right? time. <laughs> and then yeah. So, so an interesting thing happened. I'm a member of an organization called the Guilford Merchants Association. They're, they're, we call them GMA. They're here in at the Greensboro, North Carolina area. And the pandemic, the, the lockdown, the shutdown happened about seven days, seven to 10 days before I was to do a live digital marketing workshop mm. for over 55 business owners in a conference room. And it was going to be the biggest workshop I've, I've, I've ever done personally, because remind you, this is like, I'm, I'm going to get out and I'm going to do this now. Mm. And um, they said, Jay, we're not going to be able to do it live. And I'm like, I had to make a, a choice. And I said, well, I have a webinar software. Do you think we could invite all of them and I could set up a webinar and I could deliver it via webinar? And they're like, do you think you can do that? And I'm like, yes, I know I can do it. <laughs> and we pivoted them. Uh, and we did a webinar as extremely successful and they ended up flipping all of their live programs for the entire year of 2020 to zoom and webinar format. And they actually interviewed me as, a, as like, they're like local business owner, like Mike's good <laughs> leads, leads the way for this, this digital, uh, the thing, this, this, you know, turning everything into online format, the zoom format. And, um, but, but the reason why I think if you talk about the next five years and that pivot that pivot happened for me last year because about a year ago, I joined Digital Marketer as a certified partner because it fit with my with the pivot I was making of wanting to speak, wanting to get in front, wanting to teach, wanting to deliver value and help these small business owners grow and be and make them more reliant on their marketing person or themselves. And less of like, Jay, can I pay you to do that for me? And don't get me wrong, I'll still take clients and fulfill their marketing mm. at a much higher price point. Just not but, scalable at the end of the day. It's just- yeah, it's just not scalable. I'm not scalable, mm. um, but my boot camp is scalable, right? Because I can train people to take people through a boot camp. Um, you know, my workshops are scalable because I can ultimately train people or I could just you know, teach more people. One of me could teach millions of people, you know, that's scalable. Like the people out there can help me scale, but I can't duplicate my own efforts. Uh, uh, I'm, I can't clone myself. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, I don't mind taking on a few clients and we have a good handful of really good monthly uh, recurring uh, fulfillment clients that we do a lot of online services for. Uh, but really my, my goal, my, my five-year plan here is to, is to be the face of my brand and get out there and try to help as many small business owners figure out what's going on online. Cause they can't keep up with it, right? Mm-hmm. They've got 15 million. We barely, can. <laughs> like we barely, we, we barely can. Like I'm still trying to figure out how iOS 14 is hitting me in, the, in my clients in the Facebook ad department. You know, like I can't seem to, you know, it's, 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 it's odd right now. It's a world time, a, a strange time. Um, but clients don't even know what that means if I say that, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so for them to even think of it, doing their own marketing. That's why I say like, we really work well if you have a marketing person in your business that we can train or work yeah. with, you know, we act, act as that CMO. Fish, right? At the end of right. The teach them how to fish, right? That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's where I'm at. And that's, that's kind of where I want to be mm-hmm. uh, over the next few years is really just, just really be the face of, of the brand and, and be looked upon as kind of that person who just wants to help local business owners figure it out. And, and, you know, I think the end of the day, like, it, because we're, it's almost like when you're in the game of marketing, you forget that people don't know this stuff. Like, 
and and the reality was that you look at like the growth of Zoom during that period of time when when the pandemic hit the like the massive growth they went through. Oh yeah. And you realise that there's the huge gap in the marketplace. Um, I mean, this happened to me years ago when there was accounting software in Australia because what they decided to do was bring in a GST, so a tax, a, a mm. clean cut, ten percent tax on everything essentially. When it used to be sales tax, and used to be all these complexities, so just one tax on top of everything. It meant that all the people had to have either implement a new accounting system or actually get a new one that would handle it. They had to be converted, right? And it was right just before Windows and all that sort of stuff took off. So the massive amount of purchasing of accounting software in that very short period of time, and it was, I think it was in 2000 this all happened. So suddenly we, my business went from a scenario of doing good money every month, like 100 grand a month that we're doing in sales, and then we're selling accounting software to almost 10,000 or less within three months. Oh my so gosh. the entire business sort of fell off the cliff and it never recovered because what people did is they panicked about the tax then. So they, they didn't want to invest any more money or spend any money in their business because they were worried they might have to pay this tax I didn't know about. Mm. And, but it made everybody much better at accounting and much better at keeping track of their business because they had to because the tax returns had to be done every month or every quarter. Um, and it's funny now with the government, like they, they sent out a thing and said, we'll give you a grant because you've been affected by the, by the pandemic, um, but you need to tell us how you went for the last two weeks. And I would think that 10 years ago, 20 years ago even, people would have gone, I have no idea. But now because right. they're keeping track of it, it's changed that whole process where there's an expectation you should know when yeah. most businesses didn't get told by their accountant until six months later that they were going broke or whatever, right? It's like they're really yeah. fast. So it's interesting how this kind of sudden groundswell of something just takes all the oxygen out of a marketplace and then transitions it to something else. And then when they get yep. there, they think, well, hang on a minute, that's not quite what I wanted. And the amount of people who changed, like we sold accounting software, the amount of people who change afterwards think, I've got the wrong thing. I didn't really think about what I was needing. I just reacted and followed the herd. Yes. Um, you know, and so it's. I think that's the, the the settling part of this process is you're going to see a lot of people buy all this stuff and not necessarily use it properly or hit the wall with it. I saw someone post something on Facebook this morning and said, "Oh, I'm over Zoom. It just keeps on dropping out and doing these things. Where I'm going to what's there? What else is there?" And then everybody <laughs> underneath it defended Zoom. <laughs> that's quite interesting, right? <laughs> it's like, no, it doesn't work fine for me. Like, you know, because I've, I've got to make sure I make the right buying decision. But it's, it's interesting. I think that's the opportunity in the marketplace is that people now can do online when yes. they never could before. And it's not that hard. But, you know, mm. you've, got to, you know, you've got to get the right tool for the job, right? You can't just be trying to use a, a star stew grove with a flatty, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny you say that with the, the Zoom conversation is hysterical. Um, and the accountant situation, I was just picturing a whole bunch of people with shoe boxes coming to their accountants. Pretty system. much is the way it worked, yes. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. I first started selling accounting software, it, back in the days before even Windows, like it was like yeah. the shoe box was real. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. My dad, my dad's been an accountant for like 50 years and he's like, yeah, put your receipts in a shoe box and that's it and we have to go through them. But, um, but you know, I something that's happened over the last couple of weeks. I mean, this is really going on right now in my business. Like if I'm, if I'm getting real for like right now mm. is I've had a lot of people ask me if they could just, if I had any type of coaching like group coaching or one-to-one -one coaching that can be delivered via zoom or a web meeting. Um, and obviously I know it's, possible, but I had never really thought of making that a product in my business or as a service. So, so in August, we're going to be launching our first, um, one-to-one -one coachings with people who have gone through our strategy boot camp, and then group coaching for anyone who owns a business that wants to work on something and just get like kind of an ask me anything, just kind of a ask the experts and I'll work with them through it. And, um, I've got a couple of real affordable price points for that, but that only that's only been birthed it's being birthed now a year after everybody learned about zoom and being able because you a year ago everybody was terrified of yeah. doing this sort of thing right and now that people are well, figuring school kids it out are doing it now, right school kids have to do it yes yes so so the people that i work with the parents and the grandparents that own these businesses they're like Oh yeah, I'd be happy for you to teach me if I didn't have to go anywhere. I could just do it from my my home office, and I'm like, this this is gold. the opportunity. It's gold, this is right? gold. No, they wouldn't do it before. They like they go, no, no, you're gonna come see me or whatever. Now don't come see me. Um, right. 
you know, it's like it's quite interesting. It's almost like it, it's complete reverse. So they don't want you to go and see them the hours and before they would insist on it. <laughs> completely, completely. Yeah. If, if you own a business out there, try to find a way to deliver value virtually because the amount of time and gas and mm. energy and effort and just just time it all comes back to time again time and money right um you can you can really scale by doing this sort of thing right this this virtual conversation um and and people aren't afraid of it anymore like zoom has changed that right it's, yeah. you know the, the pandemic changed it so. and i think it'll never change back so i think a lot of people would you know like you know the virtual conferences and stuff like that will keep going because it's so much more cost effective to run and they don't have yeah. all the you know they're suddenly discovered like a same with um in in australia for example they because we're in again in another lockdown they said oh um if you force an employee to come to work when they didn't need to we're going to fine you ten thousand dollars all right Oof. and yeah. i'm going that's interesting, isn't it? Because previously it was, you know, we want them all to go to work, right? Like that's, the, and now they realize, hey, I can get work done at work. And some people are saying, I'm not coming back to work. If you're going to force me to come back to work, I'm quitting, right? right. And it's like the whole thing's changed when all these businesses suddenly realize that actually could work from home. They yeah. didn't need that big office in town and they didn't need that big infrastructure that you know, what they did, most of it could be done at home. There are so many commercial properties that are being vacated and have been vacated and are people are leaving because they've they they used to have 50 people coming in the office and they're like we're just as just as efficient without that overhead without that lease without that you know 30 40 50 60 thousand dollar a month uh rent payment over our heads so yeah. yeah it's 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 happening everywhere i think as a, as a startup like if you can focus on solving those problems um, whether that's helping them do it better or, or giving them some resources to do it. I think that's the opportunity in the marketplace right now is come out with those solutions because there's so many of them to seriously mm -hmm. be out doubt there's enough people to handle it in terms of what's sitting there now. Yeah, no doubt. Mm. No doubt. Brilliant. All right. So um, if someone wants to have a chat with you, what, do they, what, what should they do? Yeah, that's a, that's awesome. And thanks for asking me. Uh, so the, the best thing, if you want to have a chat with me is go to jvimobile.com. So just as it says, j, letter J, letter V, letter I, and then mobile, M-O-B-I-L-E.com. Um, that's our website. We just, we just spent a lot of time uh, kind of revamping it and getting it to a place where we really feel like it, it matches who we are. Um, it really speaks from, from the point that we want it to be. prior to that. It was very, I don't know. I was just, I'm never happy with the website. Right. But this website's is the first time finished, it's website's never finished. Done. Right. Um, but I finally feel like right now it's at a place where it says everything I want to say. Right. So and, um, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and, um, and they can definitely, or, or email me, which is just J at jvimobile.com, which is easy, but, but yeah, check out that website. And I do have a, a, a kind of a sister website that was launched right before the pandemic, which is that tutorial training, teaching type of website. And that, that address is how to dot agency. Mm -hmm. So it's just literally H O W T O dot agency. It's not a dot com. It's a dot agency. And, and there's a lot of blogs and material. Um, if you're a small business owner and you're looking for some tips, tricks, you know, totally, you know, free, whatever, just, just pure value. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, how to dot agency is kind of the, the resource for that. And we're trying to, we're trying to keep it populated with good content. Nice. Good, great, great work. So really Thanks. appreciate your time. And I think we had, a, we, you know, we could probably go on for hours with this and maybe we'll later, <laughs> but, um, yeah, man. yeah, I really appreciate you coming on the show and, um, check out the website and, um, I'll hope to talk to you again soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. I really appreciate it.
That's a wrap on another awesome episode for the Startup Secret Show for Nippernaws. Just before you go, if you like this episode, we'd be very grateful for a five-star review. Please also consider recommending the show to a friend or two. Make sure you subscribe for future episodes at StartupSecrets.show right now. Until next time, if you're an editor make a start on your next great business idea today.